Hi everyone, thank you for inviting me to speak today. My name is Marie Tosa and I'm a fourth year PhD student in the Department of Fisheries, Wildlife and Conservation Science in the School of Agricultural Science at Oregon State University. I became interested in science when I was a little kid. My mom was a science outreach teacher and taught summer classes at the Museum of Science in Boston. If you've ever been there, you'll know that this museum is absolutely amazing. It has everything from stuff about space travel and replicas of dinosaurs like T-Rexes to the live lightning show where they put a person in a birdcage and stri strike it with the giant lightning bolts. But my absolute favorite thing was the live animal exhibit where they talked about how animals are different and what animals eat, where they live, uh, and also how to take care of these animals. So as a kid, I would go to the Museum of Science all the time. My mom taught me how amazing science is. She taught me that animals aren't just cool because they're fun to look at, but also what kind of things you could learn by doing science. Having grown up on the East Coast, the West was always something I was drawn to. I loved the picturesque mountains, all the public land that was out here, and the giant magnificent trees, and of course, the large carnivores. Corvallis is such a cool place because there are so many unique ecosystems just a short drive away. The ocean and the beach are only an hour away. The Cascades are also only an hour away. And the high desert and some of the biggest volcanoes on the US are only a little bit further than that. Every time I go on a hike or even a drive, I'm reminded what an amazing place this is and how cool the nature is here. I was drawn to Oregon State University because of its prestigious wildlife program. So many of the people I worked with or have taken classes with have done one degree or another at OSU, so I feel incredibly lucky to be going here for my PhD. My research is about the ecology of the Western Spotted Skunk, a carnivore that scientists and ecologists know very little about, and also looking at the diversity of living things in the forests of the Pacific Northwest, especially the old growth forests and the impact that logging has on the living organisms in these areas. Through my research, we hope to better inform forest management and strike a balance between economic output, so supporting people's livelihoods, and conserving and protecting living organisms like birds, mammals, plants, fungus, and also not everyone's favorite, bugs. My research aims to understand how all these little pieces fit together and what happens when one of the pieces of the puzzle disappear. Whenever I tell people I work with skunks, one of the first things that they ask me is, have you ever been sprayed? And it's very unfortunate because that's exactly what happened the first time I caught one. Luckily, my field crew and I lived in separate housing from other crew members, and we learned very quickly not to go into the main office after our trapping successes. Right now, I'm in the data analysis and writing phase of my PhD. I've completed the fun fieldwork, and I'm now working on getting results that I can communicate with the broader scientific community and the communities in which we conducted the research. It's the most crucial part of the scientific process, but sometimes it's a grind just because we have to sit in front of a computer all day long. So far, we've learned that these spotted skunks, which are basically the size of a squirrel, can travel a few miles in one night if they want to or need to, and they eat everything from salamanders and birds to small mice and shrew moles. They also eat things like yellow jackets and wasps, so they link the terrestrial ecosystem to the aquatic and arboreal systems. We've also learned that some of the old growth forest areas support more diversity of organisms than even aged plantations. The pandemic has definitely slowed down my research. It's been difficult to get samples processed in the lab and conducting the genetics component of my project has been difficult because so few people can be in the lab at the same time. But because mostly everything has been converted to distance learning, I've been fortunate to be able to spend time at home with my partner, my blue healer, Blueberry. We've also had the opportunity to travel home to Maryland and Massachusetts for an extended period of time by going on some cross country road trips, all still while keeping up with the work that I need to for my research. In five years, I hope I've graduated with my PhD and I'm still doing research in the Pacific Northwest. I've learned so much about this area and I've grown to love it. And there's still so much more to learn. Having the ARC support has been so crucial to my success as a PhD student at OSU. When I'm slogging through some data analysis or lab work, it's been a boost to hear that somebody else cares about my research and wants to know how it's going outside of my immediate circle. 
The financial support from ARCS has allowed me to be a full human instead of feeling financially unstable and feeling like any money that I was making had to go toward rent and buying food. Because of ARCS, I felt confident adopting Blueberry and growing our family. I've been able to invest in, a, in growing a vegetable garden, going on camping trips and taking trips home. And because I get to be a full human, my science benefits and gets better too. Thank you so much, ARCS.